Welcome to the Wallace Show Aftercast, all the stuff we didn't get to during the course of the show today. Uh, as promised, going to keep it a little bit lighter today. Eve, well, I am. Uh, I, I see your face. What? Well, I'm not. There's no way this is lighter. Well, n- lighter, yeah. not like we got really political the other day. What? And it could still get the what? Really? Oh, no. This is totally I thought, No, okay. And here's the thing. I want to talk about Gavin. Gavin goes, man, I fully uh, get you now. Because in, in the past, when we did the show, we had some super legalistic people and people would get really mad and want to cancel me over non-salvation issues and i and like i'm trying not to be like screamy like because it didn't happen to me so i can just react sure. to it um if it had happened to me i probably would have been upset if i had gotten the call um but we take calls and gavin screens them before they come to me and so he's gotten a, a couple in a row of people disagreeing with things that we said on the air and being very passionate about their disagreement and I, I, I venture to say the one about Rashi Rice was probably more directed at Betty, I would hope, because Betty was harsher about that story than I was. Because didn't you have somebody call that, like, you're not being kind? I had two people. Okay. Uh, so, and I will say this, just as a, a prerequisite before getting into this, that these people who called in and had this conversation with me were not overbearing and oh, they weren't. cruel. Okay. There, there, was, there wasn't a certain level oh, of... Nice. Of like just outright meanness, sure, but like finger wagging. Wow, well, okay, yeah, which it still is, is annoying. Finger wagging can set me off too, and then yeah. I can escalate so the situation. Our whole story, just to kind of like go back to if you've listened to the main podcast, was about Rasheed Rice, the right. Kansas City Chief wide receiver who was racing, who almost killed children. So yeah. I would love to see how people want to defend that. Him. Yeah, and so Betty was very, very vocal. Yeah, I will about say this. there's a lot of vocal things, a lot of topics that Wally is super vocal about. Yeah. I'm vocal about certain ones, uh-huh. and this one definitely sure. hit, hit, it hit with her. I tried to balance it a little bit, because I do believe in having balance. Like, there are times when I walk out on the ledge, and Betty plays devil's advocate, or she balances it out for us, because I think that's important to have somewhat both sides. And so I tried to balance that out a little yeah. bit, but apparently I didn't even do a, a good enough job. So the first person who called in to critique that situation said that we had no uh, grace for the Rishi Rice situation, mm-hmm. a grace for Rishi Rice himself, uh, mm-hmm. that we didn't focus on saying something along the lines of our ending with the thought of we're praying that Rishi Rice finds yeah, there a better go. way. Or, That's the pray, problem. like she said, oh, you guys didn't even say that you were praying for the people who got hurt I'm not. in the situation. I'm not. And so she said that it's our job to remember that he, and this is her words, sure. and I'll try and deliver it. In a way that, again, I, you're I, already making I'm me already mad. Gavin. Hoping, I'm, I'm always hoping that <laughs> I'm not. Just spit del- it out. Just say it. She said that, like we, oh, I just lost track of my thought. Um, her words. The, oh, you. her words were that this is just a kid, and she mentioned like the thought that like unsafe people do unsafe stuff, uh, that we shouldn't critique him too harshly for doing these things because don't you remember being young and don't you remember making mistakes and my response to that was very much in the ballpark of sure but there are levels to mistakes yeah, that can a be critiqued that were criminal Absolutely. i made dumb choices when we i was 21 did. but i wasn't driving 100 miles she's like yeah. like you know she, uh, yeah like her you never know if, like, maybe he had bad parents and maybe he had bad coaches. We can and maybe like, all day. Yeah. We can maybe parents. all day. But here's yeah. to, here, who's to say that, okay, your children got hit by a drunk driver. Okay, well, we should have some grace for him. Right. He made some bad decisions. Right. He was only 23. Yeah. Well, uh, sad. I mean, it's, I mean, come on. We have shouldn't, a little we grace. shouldn't, have a little we shouldn't mercy. have any we shouldn't, uh, punishment. I mean, maybe he didn't drink the alcohol. Maybe someone made him drink the alcohol. <laughs> okay, he we was can sad. maybe all day. Right. We can maybe all exactly. day, but the facts are that he was being stupid as a 23 year old. And I think another thing that makes it m- more mad for me is that this is a kid with millions of dollars. And I don't think. I don't think athletes deserve that amount of money. So sure. that's part of the problem for me. But then to go as far as you could race, you could make those stupid decisions as a 23-year-old and race, but you're taking it one step further by going on a public sure. highway where you are jeopardizing the lives of innocent people. That's what makes me yeah, angry. I've always had no problem with somebody doing something dumb, taking themselves We've all out. Done something like dumb. I get that, but yes. when you when you put other people at risk, because it's selfish, you want to do what you mm-hmm. want to do. That's that is where I do have a problem with and, it as and well. The person who was calling in, I don't, I don't think she would 
say that it was obviously like, oh, he's not at fault for these things. Like she, her right. argument wasn't that the man that she wasn't at fault for these things. It was that our we shouldn't be as opinionated tone, as we are. Yeah, that yes, that our tone was too from yeah. up high. judgmental and should be more of grace. Yes. Well, see, here's the thing. Like mm-hmm. I, the life is about like everyone says you shouldn't be judgy. No, the, that's not what the Bible talks about. The Bible talks about wisdom, discernment. You are able to judge situations. You can sit in judgment of things. What I don't sit in judgment of is somebody's faith. I'm not going to sit there and go, he drove recklessly and could have hurt people. He's definitely not a believer. He might be. I don't I have no idea. Yeah. No clue. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that you go, well, he did this, but we don't want to judge him. So, uh, so he's going to stand before a judge, and he will be judged for yeah. his actions. Yeah. Well, I was there a, are if consequences. If I was a mom or a dad in that, involved in that situation, he had hit me, and my kid was in the back seat. I would be. I wouldn't have I any. Want, I, I mean, I would. I would want him to pay the consequences. Yeah, I wouldn't have any. Yeah. Again, I think you can have grace, and I certainly would personally hope that he becomes a better man and sure. that something it might good use, it might, comes ca- out it of might this. do something good for him but, but i would have, i think we're stating the yeah, obvious i would have zero legal grace like i would have in the, from the eyes of the law and from the eyes of how this world works i will have no gra- i would have no grace in that situation for the the consequences because again you can say that oh he's just a kid all oh, this he's like an adult right. like i don't think that we should allow ourselves to think that people who are you know, over the age, who are around the age of 21, 22, aren't adults. They're right. adults in like the the world's eyes, and we should expect something from them beyond what this I, guy did. Again, like I tried to balance it, and I tried to have like that grace perspective in it, like just a little bit to to take some of the edge out of it. You know, talking about well, yeah, no one is prepared for that kind of money and stuff like that. So it's like it, it wasn't like hate filled, but it it does serve the, it, I. The one thing that will never happen here, and you'll never hear me say, is like wrapping up a story with a stereotypical Christian radio nonsense bull crud uh, wrap up that so many Christian stations do. Uh, the big ones, they would do that story, and they'd be like, you know, it's just such a tough situation all around, and we just need to be praying for everybody involved. And then they're not going to do it. Like, to me, that is so disingenuous. It's such garbage. It's pandering. It's playing to the crowd that you think mm-hmm. wants to hear, oh, we're such good Christians. Now, the reality is, if I, I'm i not praying for Rashid. I'm not. You know, I'm not praying for that guy's family that the, the cop shot him because he shot a cop. You know, like, I'm not. Maybe I should. I don't know. But I'm not going to say that I am just to give it some wrap up that makes me look like this mm-hmm. great believer when I'm not doing that. You know, well, and I think, too. That if you feel like we should have, that we should wrap up in that situation and we don't, I don't think that this is the place that, I, I think you can take the responsibility of saying, hey, you know, maybe they didn't do this, but it's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna you, sit there you and, pray I'll for I'll tell them. my kids, hey, yeah. this was awful, this man was in the wrong, we're yeah. going to pray for everyone involved. Like, I think that there are layers of, this is a place where we tell a story and we, I think, again, justly critique the situation. And if you don't feel like it's okay that we didn't pray on air for the situation, then it's something you get to do. Like you, yeah. Go ahead and pick up that mantle for us if that's the I've always situation said that you feel that way in. That this is a, a place where you can use teachable moments. Like if I say things you don't agree with, then you use that as a way to foster in your own family. Hey, this is that's well, he's not doing that, but this is what we're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Like like what you're saying, and like I, you use it to entrench your beliefs and your values into your kid. You know, uh, the other one that was funny is that someone we were talking about uh, my friend. I didn't uh, in high school. I didn't uh, want to be friends with this guy anymore because he stopped listening to Motley Crue and listened to Bob Marley. And somebody called Gavin and was like, why are we talking about Motley Crue? I'm like, I love that we just pretend that somehow when we got saved that we don't even know that other bands existed. And and like you had this whole life that you, you, you tell a story and you go, I was listening to a band that wasn't a Christian band. Like, and that's again, that's how that's how so many Christian outlets and content people dance around everything it's instead cheesy. of just being honest and going yeah so i was listening to motley crew you know like i still listen to some motley crew you know like it's it's i'm just trying to be honest about life and share things the way that they happen but i hate the scrubbing that we try to do inside of our faith and that's why 
people just don't respond to so many Christians because you whitewash everything and you stop being relatable and and you you want to put yourself up as this thing that's not relatable to anybody but you're so super holy i think that one thing again that if we're talking about what makes way fm different than going to other stations or going to other um media consumption places when it comes to like christian christianity and faith is that i think you can come here and connect with us on a level that is like you're talking about like you can come here and be a fan of Motley Crue. You can be a fan right. of whatever you listen to. Come here, hear that, hey, like we did like that, still like that kind of stuff. But guess what? That's not like the only, like we. you can also come here and hear that that's coupled with faith and that's coupled with the good things that do happen here. So the takeaway is, is if you get in an accident on the freeway oh driving crazy, we will judge you. But mm-hmm. if you are listening to Motley Crue while doing that, we will not. <laughs> so there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Done. Solved. If Lady you've ever Rock. done that in your life. What do you got? Okay, so mine is all about O.J. Simpson. Woo! Oh, so deep if dive. D- if you didn't know, he passed away at 76 years old from prostate cancer. And of prost- course, oh, okay. all the news Ow. stations are going back to 1994, 95 and talking about how the whole trial went down it was this huge thing now i at that time i was maybe nine nine or ten so yeah did you know anything about like did no. your parents tell you anything about no. it or, okay didn't know a thing about it but i will tell you this i remember where i was when they read the verdict for oj simpson on whether he was guilty or not guilty i remember it because in my principal made such a huge statement in my head so you didn't know my principal of the small uh podunk country private school that i went to um he was probably six four oh big man 200 pounds maybe he commanded authority i was scared of him from sure. five to I'm scared From of him right now. From kindergarten to my, my senior year, the man had a low voice, and he was, you just knew to say Intense. yes sir, no sir. Right. No, sir. So we're having lunch. We're in the cafeteria, and I remember sitting at the table, probably eating a Lunchable. Who knows? I don't know. A bologna sandwich that my mom <laughs> yeah. made me. And I remember my principal walking in. It was a huge, it was, was a huge, it was packed, okay? There were a lot of kids in there. My principal comes walking in. His, he's in his suit and his tie. He comes in and he pulls out that the That surprises me. What? Yeah. A suit and tie. <laughs> Wore a suit and tie. Uh, I know. Wore a suit and tie every day. Okay, he comes in there uh. and he grabs the television that's on one of those rollers. Mm. As kids, we're excited. We're like, yeah. oh, we're going to get get to watch oh, TV. Yeah. Cartoons. While we're, yeah, watch TV while we're eating lunch. That was not the case. He comes in. He didn't say many words, oh, okay? Goodness. What he said, he had purpose to. Ooh. He comes in there, rolls in the TV. And sits down, and he's watching it, okay? He's got his elbows on his thighs, on his knees, and he's sitting there, and he's watching. And he turns on the news, and we're like, oh, boring. It's the (laughs) O.J. Simpson trial. Mm. And he turned it turned it on just as they were about to announce the verdict. The trial of the century, it's been called. They they say, O.J. Simpson found not guilty. My principal, I just see him. He's probably in his 60s at that time. He puts his head in his hands. Sits there for a minute, gets up, turns the TV off, and rolls the TV right back into the corner and walks back to his office. Oh, really? And I remember thinking, Why did he want this was a big deal. Like, I guess he didn't have a TV in his office, and that was the only TV that uh-huh. was available. I mean, this is a podunk yeah. church. Sure. I mean, school well, it was a church on Sundays. Anyway, <laughs> it, it and just a funeral made, home the rest yeah, of the week. It just made, <laughs> it made an image in my mind that this is something serious. I don't know what it is, but O.J. Sim- Simpson did something bad. It's funny. You're and my nine. principal doesn't like it. You're nine going through this. I'm 26. I'm sitting in a newsroom oh, wow. in a, a news station because uh, we had a news and a sports station and a rock station. And we're all gathered in there watching this. And then the myriad of different opinions when that was announced was crazy. Like there's all this discussion and, oh, man, what? You know, disbelief. So in your office there were people oh, that yeah. were. Where did you land in the in the moment? Oh, I was like, how did he get away with that? And I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought right. that up, Gavin. Because if you're wondering where Gavin was, he was just a sparkle in his mother's yeah, eye. That might not have been. So a here's here's 
what I did. I did some digging because I wanted to be refreshed on how in the world did you that forget man stuff. Get away yeah. with it. Okay. I don't know much about this. Case. So let me I've educate you. TV shows, but I'm let me educate for this. you in the potties. Can't okay. Wait. So before her murder, so he's been accused of killing his ex-wife and a friend of hers that was with her at the time. So before the murder, there was a multiple calls made by Nicole, that's his ex-wife, to 911 asking them to come and help her due to Sim- OJ Simpson's violence mm. towards her. He was accused multiple times, even even arrested multiple times for violence in the home. Okay? okay? So he's already got that against him. We know that that is truth, that is fact. Okay? He had a house guest at the time when the murders went down. His name was Cato. He was Cato Kalen. Yep, he was staying at OJ Simpson's home. His house guest, Cato, saw Simpson, OJ, on the property wearing a dark sweatsuit around 30 minutes before the murder took place. Oh, my. Okay. So then a neighbor of Simpson's was walking his dog and didn't see Simpson's Bronco in, at home. So that means Simpson was not home. Allegedly. He, allegedly. <laughs> he makes a phone call to his girlfriend at the time from the Bronco. So he's in his car, and he's calling his girlfriend. So we know he's at least not home. His cars had phones in them. Well, he was he was an NFL star. I'm so, sure he okay. had yeah. money, and he had it, they might have had the block. We phone. had like brick the, phones Z- back then. Zach, Morris. the Mac Morris phone. Yeah, we yeah. had Motorola the brick phones. Yeah, they were huge, okay. but they did work. Okay, there was hair evidence found on a cap that was on the premises, and victim's hair, uh, at the victim's shirt. So they found hair that looked like oj simpson's on a cap that was found like out in a lawn somewhere on the premises and on one of the victim's shirts there's also fiber evidence that's found on a glove okay there is one black lone glove, the glove. That's, that's sitting on the property of where the murder took place the linchpin of they the case they don't know where the second one is but in that glove they find that's on the premises they find fiber like um carpet fibers from a bronco inside the Glove, okay? All circumstantial. But, yeah, it's all circumstantial because they can't prove that that's actually from his Bronco. It could that from surprises someone else's me. Bronco. Yeah, th- what are Back the odds then, of that? who knows? Okay, Simpson. O.J. Simpson. They find him the next day. He's got fresh cuts on his hand. Yeah. Oh my after goodness. the murder. Okay, yeah. but wait. Goodness. How did he get those? Blood is found in the Bronco and in O.J.'s home. And some of that blood... Is Nicole's blood. Yeah, like, how okay? did this, like, not... But maybe it wasn't then. Maybe it was during another We're altercation. The blood was in OJ's Nicole, actual Bronco? It was in, in his in the house. house. In his home. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so they find oh, yeah. a, a pair of socks of OJ's, and her blood is on it. Oh, my goodness. Okay, how do you... How do you well, she lived there at the time. Maybe sure. she got in an accident, cut her hand. We don't know. Okay, so blood found in the Bronco... Okay, so there is blood found on yep. the Bronco. It could be O.J. Simpson's. It could be Nicole's. It could be her friend. Okay, the matching glove. Mm. They find the matching glove at his property. Mm. So one of the gloves was found on Nicole's property. Oh, the wow. other one was found on O.J.'s property. <laughs> oh and goodness. that um, house no guest way. that he had at the time, Cato, claims that he heard three bumps in the middle of the night. and he And then that's where they found the glove. Okay, mm. but they're claiming that maybe a cop planted it. Mm. No, We're not I, sure. Oh, I do remember that. Because that cop was known for throwing slurs around, so right. they did say he could have planted it. Okay, right. Simpson devoted no time to finding the real killer, and no evidence surfaced I do that it was that. anyone else. He was like, I'm going to look for the real killer, and, when and he, he never kept did. De- defining his, uh, his innocence. Funny. I, and I went to a uh, Carrot Top show, believe it or not, the comedian, and he had a golf club with binoculars on it, and he's like, look, I'm OJ, and he does a golf swing and brings the binoculars up to his eyes, and he's like, look, I'm looking for the real killers while I'm on the golf course. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, like you would think if that per- if there was someone out there that killed your child's mom, yeah, you would do something. Oh, yeah. To find the real killer, especially if people think you're the one that did it. Right. But he didn't bother trying. Then in 2007, he wrote a book called (laughs) If I Did It that described in detail events leading up to the moment of the murder. So theoretically, though, like he can write that because he's been he's been tried. uh, He's been acquitted, acquitted. And so you cannot be tried for that case in that murder again. I, I, if new evidence comes up, then may, I don't, I don't know where the law lands on that one. I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure of when you could, or they'd have to have a different, a different charge. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's brazen. That's like, I got away with it, and so I'm yeah. just going to do this and make money. But you can't make money because the court ruled against him making money on it, and the money had to go to the Goldman family, which I thought right, was Right, because good. he was found not guilty in one— Federal case, federal, but not civil. Right. So in civil, they found him guilty, and then he had to pay money to yeah. that— because there's a different Family. burden of proof in a civil case versus a uh, a federal case, and so the argument was the prosecution failed to uh, uh, provide enough evidence to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. In a civil case, you can be found guilty and have to pay money to people where you weren't in the uh, criminally liable. Well, and also too, I th- this was one of the most highly talked about cases oh, for and, sure. it, and it was one of the first yeah. and so people were tied to the tv wanting to know what is the outcome going to be i think too i don't know how well they did with covering up the um what do you call it the jurors oh sequestering covering up their identity right. oh, i don't know yeah. how well they did with that and so if he came out not guilty then like if he came out as guilty there might be problems, problems. Right, right, they right. might get Death threats. Right. They probably did on the other hand, yeah. too. But where they went wrong is the prosecution shouldn't have had him try on those gloves. The glove because was when big he deal. tried on the glove that was found on the property where the murder took place, it did not fit. He's like, I can't, I, I'm trying to get it on. I just can't somehow get this glove on. I've put my feet into uh, shoes that were way too small for me because I thought they were going to look good. And I got them in there. Now, was it comfortable? Absolutely no. not. But I got them in there. Yeah. And he's just like, I can't even get this glove on. And Jackie, uh, 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 what was the uh, attorney's name? Oh, God, it's escaping me. Oh, come on. Not Jackie. That's the guy from Seinfeld. Uh, but the attorney was like, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. That was his big line. Mm-hmm. And that was they a mistake. They shouldn't have done it. Yep. They shouldn't have done it. And then they didn't even play for the jury. I don't think they even played the 911 calls from yeah. Nicole before right. the whole murder took place. Yeah, it's crazy. Just, how did he get away he with it? He got away with it. He did eventually go to jail for trying to sell some memorabilia for some. I don't remember what was that was. He was trying to get it back from a Las Vegas hotel yeah. and had a gun and yeah. threatened them. And so so they were like, okay, well, at least we got him for this for like nine years. You know, like somehow that, but that doesn't do yeah, the. He only the, got out just a couple of years ago, I thought. Yeah, that doesn't do the Simpson family any no. good. Or not the Simpson family, the uh, Goldman family any good because they still have to deal with that. And then they will probably get first crack at his estate, though, um, unless it was set up in like some kind of trust where they couldn't. Technically, that debt needs to be settled, and it's probably in the tens of 20s or 30s of millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, and before the murder trial took place, he was on that f- that leaning p- police in a chase, a slow, oh, yeah. a slow speed chase. chase, okay? He was Famous. in that white Bronco, yep. and he was driving around and for an hour, I think, yeah. and then he ended up in his own driveway? We all watched that, man. And I watched that thing live. Him on. Oh, there yeah. There were people that were coming and like going, yeah, yeah go, OJ, OJ. Go, go juice. Yeah, it was crazy. And he had threatened to take his own life. Right. But he didn't. Yeah. But still, he was found not guilty. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Uh, I, I, I was telling Betty about this earlier, like people SNL. Have, people have been accused of murder and found guilty for less. Less. Don't oh, you, absolutely. Don't you go to jail for like. Can't you be like, aren't you a criminal for avoiding like running away from the police though? Well, that's a minor thing that would have they would have yeah they would have gotten on something really minor. Killing your ex wife right. that's a bigger. Yeah, problem. it was it was a different time into like in the media like SNL did a sketch where they had uh, Tim Meadows yes. writing on a, a screen like John Madden used to do like X's and O's for football and he and he's got a football play and he's like okay and if you see over here and he's pretending to be. Uh, O.J. Simpson, and he's like, now here's where the guy's going to run like this, and then this guy's going to run over here, and he's drawing the lines, and at the end, the reveal is, it writes, I did it, and I, <laughs> I remember watched watching that. that, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, that was one of the funniest satires on that. And he's that. interviewing a coach, yeah. and it's Will Ferrell, yes. and he's like, man, you just killed them, and yeah. you got away with it, yeah. like saying all these things, Will Ferrell's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
So anyways. Well, there you go. Uh, that was a lot today. We didn't get to talk about any of that on the show. So you're welcome, Potties, kind of, maybe, I think. I hope so. I don't know. Uh, but Betty, I watched her do a deep dive. She has a big screen in front of her. Yeah, that she has multiple screens, screens open uh, for doing show stuff. And then one time I looked over and it was just all OJ. Once again, <laughs> this is another situation that I'm passionate about. And I can't tell you, you why. You need to start a crime podcast. I don't know why certain topics bother me, but others I'm like, eh, what are yeah. you going to do? Yeah. You want to get to birthdays? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hannah. Hannah is celebrating a birthday today. Happy birthday, Hannah. Hannah said, I'm listening to your podcast. Makes my day. I love Yay. cats and drawing and can't believe I'm almost in my mid-20s. Oh, Hannah, come a, there will come a day when you're like, <laughs> I'm closer to 40 than I am to 30. And that one's going to shock you. That one's going to blow your socks <laughs> off. All right. Do you want to get to? That was it. Wicked plans. Wicked plans. I've got a wicked plans. All right. Uh, I'm having dinner with Pastor Chad tonight. Old people uh, dinner. Old people dinner. Like four thirty with the blue hairs. But we're doing. But it was. He, he, I guess it's a nice place because it's his birthday and there and he had to get reservations and so we're doing reservations at four thirty. That was the earliest and we could get in. And how is it that you got the invite? Uh, we were gonna do uh, Pastor Chad and his wife, Phil and his wife, and me and my wife. Um, because we tried to get the six of us go together Phil before. Phil is another guy we work with. He's our engineer. He's the cool one that everyone wants to hang out with. <laughs> and uh, and so we were supposed to do dinner with all of them. Then Chad couldn't go one night. And so Phil and I went. And then Phil can't go. So Chad and I are still going. Mm. Uh, which I I went to Chad. I'm like, okay, Chad, just your opportunity to lie. If you want to bow out, you can bow <laughs> out because Phil's not coming. Uh, <laughs> the but cool I, one isn't but coming. I'll still be there if you want to go. And oh so we are still I do going not, to dinner. I, I feel sorry for all the people that are going to be there at the same time you are because you two might not get be really many. loud oh, with one I another. Know. You are both eights and you're very passionate. Good news is they can turn their hearing aids down and oh, they'll be able ain't to find. that the truth? I know. Phil's got a loud laugh too. When he, oh, when he yeah. Gets, when he, he's got a yeah. jolly Phil's loud laugh. Yeah, the <laughs> three of us would be a lot. Oh. Um, and then uh, Saturday, pickleball, last minute errands because Another we are... old uh, Yeah, situation. we're leaving. And then I'm going to crochet something on Sunday. What? No, no. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm going to take so my vitamins. And... We are leaving my chewables. Uh, and put my Velcro <laughs> shoes on. Uh, we are leaving Sunday, uh, Betty and I, for El Salvador, uh, mm-hmm. meeting at the station at 4 a.m. to jump Woo! on a flight. 4 a.m. And then five days in El Salvador with compassion, which I'm really looking forward to. I, I do love going on these trips. It's it's uh, a lot of work and, and uh, a lot of emotion, and it's just a good reset, too. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Gavin, why don't you go ahead? Um, I think it's going to be... Again, a lot of like yard work because I when I mm, I, I, did, I did this mowing, and I think that the mo- like if I'm again I'm not that tall, but I think the grass in certain places had gone up to my knee. Oh jeez! Because I okay, I'm just you're put, that neighbor. I just put it off. Yeah, I was the, I'm the eyesore of oh. the, the neighborhood, so I did like the the you know highest level of yeah. my lawnmower. Yeah, and so I'm just going over everything. And I think I've got to redo a lot of places. I was telling Betty this. I don't know if I mentioned this. I almost got a raccoon last oh, time. What? There's a little like shed in my in the corner, and yeah. I was like pushing into that corner uh-huh. where the grass was, and I didn't I had to throw it out there. And I pull it back, and a raccoon is <laughs> like running. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, the mower with wow. me. So I almost took that kid out. I got bunnies once. <gasps> you did. There was a hole. Let's that not talk about it. And it popped up as I went over it, and <sighs> it's like, oh, I I was so sad. I that was would, so that sad. would kill me. Yeah, I, it made me, it, it legit made me sad. I was, I, I it was because it was a little one too. And, Stop uh, this! I'm sorry. It was. It was horrible. I'm glad you didn't, didn't hit the raccoon. Really? We did I'm still scarred from your murder If you trial. ever come around um, a baby raccoon, they are cute. Let Keep me know it for Betty. She'll yeah, take I it. I want it. I don't care what the lo- it? I don't care what the state of Tennessee says. I'm keeping that. Thing. What does the state of Tennessee say? <laughs> says I can't have him. Florida, you can. I'll move to Florida. Yeah, then. Florida, you can have raccoons. Tell them it's a weird looking cat. Florida, I mean, you can own fat. weird things. This is just a fat With striped funny gray little cat. Hands. You should, you should. Yeah, their hands are creepy, but, no, they're but cool. Not. That one. Little, I tell you who has creepy hands. That's sloths. Those yeah, things are the creepy. little three toed sloths. I don't yeah, like it. Moving really I don't like them. I don't think you. they're cute. Yeah. I think they're scary. All right, what's your weekend besides Sunday? Because you and I will be flying together. Today, I am going to go meet my parents for lunch. Um, we typically do this before I leave for a compassion trip. They take me out. 
for lunch and see me one last time before I leave. Yeah. Uh, and then tomorrow, I'm just gonna have to get my act together. I've got I've got to pack. I've got to do laundry. I've got to clean. So funny. I've already pa- I packed like five days ago. Really? I, I did. I packed all my stuff for the trip. I have all the toys ready to go. Like I have all my snacks. I just got to put it all in a bag, and I'm good to go. Yeah. I got. Uh, yeah. So that's my plan for tomorrow, and I probably need to run and grab a couple of things. I always bring with me, and you need to remember this, Potties, if you ever go out to a third world country where you can't drink the water, mm. take with you a pack of toothbrushes, a pack of five. Mm, yeah. Because you will accidentally, because of muscle, no, forget, yeah. muscle memory, you will run it under the faucet and you'll be like, dang it! Yep, you can't do that. And so I learned that my first trip, bring with you multiple toothbrushes so I, I, that's one thing I that is a good up, idea among many i only bring the one toothbrush but what i do is because you have to use a bottle of water i sit my bottle of water in the sink yeah. so that that way it reminds me oh yeah when yeah. i have to move it like okay yeah don't put your brush yeah. under there i've also got to get my place ready because i have two little kids that are coming to check on my kitty cats while i'm gone mm-hmm. i gave boo boo bear um a booty trim mm-hmm. last night um i because was gonna say i saw the is, yeah, he said something he, about mats. Is he? It's mats. Is he? It, he's matted because he won't let me hairy. brush him, and he gets these little mats on his fur, and I know that that's got to hurt him. So I had to sit him down, and I took some scissors, and he's got little bald spots on his she bottom. She put but, uh, potato what? chip clips on his neck. Yeah, so you take these, you know, those big black uh, clips that you use in an office. Yeah, like for holding I use paper two together. Big ones. Yeah, and I take them and put them on the nape of his neck, and it like. That's what they say is like paralyzes if you, yeah, him to a degree. Yeah. You clip those things on their so neck. What the moms do to the kittens, and they, uh, they that's how they but carry if I, them. If I didn't do that, I would walk out with no hands. Oh, sorry, because you didn't declaw them. No, yeah, uh-uh. I clip them. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, I got to do a lot of things, and then like Wally said, so, and Potty's thoughts and prayers appreciated because traveling with Wally is, is as you can imagine, a nightmare. It's wonderful. Thankfully, I'm not. It, it, there's pros and cons. Last trip when we went, Marty, your wife was able to come, and it was great because she was a buffer mm-hmm. and she took up your time, yeah. and you were worried about her making sure she's okay with flying and all that mm-hmm. stuff. And it was great because if I needed some help or looking after, then you could you could do it. But I didn't take up your full attention. Sure. Whereas on this trip, Marty's not coming, and so um, that's going to be. Uh, interesting. Yeah. And so, um, please tell uh, Robin e and Danny Ray today when you have lunch with them mm-hmm. that I've got you, and that that <laughs> I, I'll make sure you come. Sadly, home safe. I know my mom will be thankful. I know she will. <laughs> but anyways, um, it's just going to be interesting. And then to think, Pastor Chad's going to be on the trip, so you'll be fine. I'll leave you alone. Yeah, he'll help a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, you and think Jake's he'll help, coming. or will he be? Well, Do you think he'll you team know, up? There's, once again, I think there's pros two, and cons. I think it's a there two are pros one on his and cons end. to True. both. I don't know. Once I get back, I'm going to get myself a Chick-fil-A sandwich with a large sweet tea, and I'm already looking forward to it. There you go. All right. Well, with that, that reminds me we won't be having podcasts next week because we will be No, Gavin said he was going to do it alone. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. What am I going to do? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Talk about sports. Yeah, so no podcast (laughs) next week. Or uh, a sports podcast. (laughs) And then we'll uh, get back to things normal a week from Monday. But we will be posting things on our stories. Yeah, please look at them, honestly. Like, watch the (laughs) stuff. Please, for the love. Like, we go and we, like, pour our hearts out for things, and because we're not doing something stupid, people are like, oh, uh, children that need help, swipe, swipe, yeah. swipe, you yeah. know. But we will be posting a lot, so uh, if you don't already follow us, search Wally Show on Facebook and Instagram, and you'll see a bunch of it there. There you go. All right, that's going to do it for your Aftercast for today, and thanks for being a potty. Bye! Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.